Good evening from Bobblehead Homestead. I am Jeff. Today is Thursday. It was 66, sunny, nice breeze. It got down into the 30s last night, and tonight there is a chance of uh, getting below freezing. So, uh, April 1st. Uh, yeah, our last frost date, I think uh, this year is like the middle of the month, the 15th, something like that. But this could be our last frost, but they say uh, you wait a couple more weeks. So, uh, all right, let's do something. Three incubators cleaned out, and that's my egg haul. Uh, I think I'm at 52 eggs today, but I'm not talking about that. I can, I should. These are the incubators that I hatch them in. I have other incubators like the styrofoam one that I incubate them in for the first 18 days with the automatic turner and all that good stuff. And then after 18 days when they go on lockdown, I can uh, separate them out of the larger incubators into these three. And that way, you know, I've got uh, w uh, one batch of Whiting True Blues, a uh, different family of Whiting True Blues, and then, uh, you know, the Marans or, you know, whatever. If I've got three different types that are hatching, I can incubate them all together in the larger one and then uh, separate them to hatch out in the smaller one. So I've been doing this once a week, sometimes twice a week. Uh, cleaning out these incubators. These two are easy <laughs> Just the two uh, parts uh, styrofoam ones are harder and because it's got this uh, Water reservoir. Hey, Bob, you want to model for us? Water reservoir and yeah, you got to stick your fingers all the way and it's just it's not all that easy to clean Bob don't be smashing any eggs. <laughs> See, they agree with me. Be careful. Okay, so yeah, got these cleaned out, scrubbed down, and now they're drying out and getting a little sunlight disinfectant. This camera can be weird sometimes with the shade and the sun, and yeah, it is what it is. And it's all, my lens is all scratched up. So I can't point it in the direction of the sun, or you, you saw that in the last video. Ah, uh, what am I yapping about? Hey, <laughs> it's been, you know, I just went a week without doing a video because I haven't been making myself do videos. So in April, I'm going to try to make myself do a video every day in the month of April. All right, and this is day one. We'll see how that turns out. And if uh, if I don't make it, I can just say, ah, that was just an April Fool's joke. There's no way I was doing it. Okay, so, because I, I, there's, yeah, I can at least, it's boring stuff, but, you know, clean out the incubators and my next project. This is another chicken chore that I do a lot of that most people with your, you know, typical backyard chicken setup don't have to do. You know, they're not cleaning out incubators once or twice a week. They're also not cleaning out these brooder tubs, uh, uh, basically one a day. I have seven groups of chicks right now. I uh, have three of them in brooders like this and I have extra brooders like this so I can rotate them out but yeah I'm having to uh, clean I don't do one every day but on average I have to do one every day I usually do you know two here three there two here and you know that'll get me through a week but yeah the baby chicks have to clean out the pine shavings and um, so that's something that I do a lot of that your normal backyard chicken people are not doing and Bob is modeling my lovely Dodge truck what am I gonna put in videos for 30 how many days are in April Bob is it 30 or 31 30 days has September April June and November so yeah okay so 30 days well here's the egg haul I can always show you my eggs uh, I can't promise it'll be the end of the day egg haul but uh, the egg haul at some point of every day in the month of April here we go this is Larry's flock. In with Larry is uh, Private Benjamin, Mary Tyler Moore. This is Mary Tyler Moore's egg. Uh, she has always laid a pointy egg like this. And, uh, yeah, let's talk about that. Pointy egg like this. Uh, there's a myth out there that uh, pointy eggs will be boys. If you hatch the pointy egg, it will be a boy. And I've gotten a bunch of girls from Mary Tyler Moore. So that, uh, that's a myth. And then like with the leghorns here, they never, never lay a pointy egg. They're, theirs are always rounded. 
uh, hers are never rounded. They're always pointy. So it, that might be true with some breeds, but uh, yeah, the pointy egg being a boy is a myth. So Larry's flock, and then I've got a Welsimer, and I've got a Moran's in there. So that's where these two eggs came from. And these are all white and true blues. Uh, these are my younger ones. These are smaller eggs. They are uh, just, what, seven months old now. So they're gonna, the eggs are going to start getting bigger here very soon. Uh, flock number two. This is where number two is in. And this is Daryl, Larry's brother, Daryl. He's the white splash, uh, white and true blue rooster. This is 2.1's egg. She lays a little green egg. Uh, these seven are all white and true blues, and I'm getting some nice sizes on these. Uh, let's see, four of those, four, five of those are older, and two of them are younger. So, but all seven of them laid an egg today. And then that is a uh, production brown egg layer. So, uh, yep, that's flock number two. Um, flock number three, this is Wildberry, the... Welsimer rooster. He is. Uh, I'm sorry. I keep doing that. I keep doing that all the time. Wildberry is Dragonberry's father. Uh, Wildberry was gifted to me from different uh, when they came down, and I have his son Dragonberry. But this is his flock, and those are two uh, Highline Brown four uh, H hens, and then I have five uh, Olive Eggers of different generations there are seven olive eggers in there today i got five out of seven i also have uh well in there she didn't lay an egg today see who didn't i have an olive eggger in there that didn't lay an egg and i have an olive eggger and uh in there that didn't lay an egg and another production brown egg there okay flock number four these are my blue, black, splash, copper mrons, but I've also got four leghorns, and they lay up a storm. I've gotten uh, four out of four for nine of the past ten days, I believe. And the one day I didn't get four, I got three. Uh, that's a uh, blue, black, or splash, copper mrons, and so are those two. And these are smaller. Those are pullets. They've just started laying. And then I have an olive egger in there. And then these are uh, some uh, uh, Americanas. They're not uh, standards of perfection Americanas, but they are true blue egg layers. So I have some of those pullets that have just started laying. Then in this flock, this is my black copper marons flock, and I also have my mint eggers, who are pullets who are just starting to lay. But three of these, and this one is really cool. Uh, that egg has a coating on it. It's called a bloom. And uh, underneath it, if I were to wash this egg underwater, underneath it, the egg would be that color. But right now, it looks kind of a purple, if I get in the sun. But yeah, that's a purple egg. And then the other three are, yeah, those are mint eggers. I used a white and true blue rooster with the 4-H hens I got from VW Family Farm. And they're laying a mint colored egg, so that's cool. Last flock is a mismatch of uh, everybody. Four of number two's daughters are in here. These are all production brown egg layers, so six of those. I've got a little olive egg or pullet that's just starting to lay. I've got 2.2, .2, uh, number two's daughter, and, um, and 2.1's sister. She lays a smaller blue egg. I, I believe that's hers. And then I've also got... Uh, the three younger daughters of number two, and I've named them 2.3, 2.4, and 2.5. Uh, speaking of that, I'll introduce you to them this month. But so these are all small eggs from pullets that are just starting to lay. I also have a white and true blue, and um, two white and true blues, and two olive eggers, and then the three of number two's kids in there. And yeah, that's the scoop on the egg haul for today. Here's another idea for an exciting segment I can do in my video every day in April, and that is get to know one of my chickens. And I don't, I don't even know if I have 30 of my chickens named, but we'll find out this month. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna profile one chicken every day in the month of April. That'll give me a segment to do every day in the month of April. So let's start out with number two. Good afternoon, number two. This is number two, and this is her element. 
hopping over the fence and uh, being the free spirit that she is. Number two has been at this property longer than I have. Uh, she was left behind by the previous owner along with three of her sisters. And she is the last one left. Uh, they, uh, they lived on their own for a couple months. Nobody was giving them food or water. They were roosting in the trees. Even after I got here, they were still roosting in the trees. It took me a long while before I, uh, you know, they ate out of my hand and I started domesticating them again. But yeah, that's number two story. She is a mutt. No clue what breed. Um, I'm guessing some game bird in her or some and or some silky maybe a cry I have no idea I have no idea she's got the little tuft on her head which might come from silkies and her size and her egg color um, and her instincts say uh, you know game foul but I don't know but yeah that's number two she goes broody she has hatched uh, several clutches of eggs for me I have five of her daughters and two of her sons right now and I'm going to be creating a little Easter egger line out of her genetics and I am selecting for uh, the blue greenish egg color I'm also selecting for broodiness so I will only be hatching the eggs from her daughters and her uh, that go broody and broody means they will be sitting they'll they're in the mood to sit on eggs and hatch them for uh, three weeks and then for months uh, well two months after they hatch they'll raise them yeah that's number two and that's her story she is the chicken of the day I don't know what she's doing right now she's teasing Daryl are you teasing Daryl number two it's not nice to tease Daryl I'm gonna keep following you around and talking about you. There's a lot of facts about you, number two. Yet we have no clue about your history uh, before you, before I came into your life. I would guess, you know, I've been here three years, uh, uh, three and a half years, and uh, she was already full grown, so she had to have been at least six months old when I got here. Um, and then I've been here three and a half years, so she's at least four. But, uh, you know, some of the stories from the neighbors is she'd been here for a couple of years. So she's at least four, uh, probably five, uh, maybe six or older. But yeah, and she still lays eggs. She lays the smallest eggs of anybody here. They're uh, a little peach colored, cream colored sometime. She knows how to get in and out. It doesn't matter if I clip her wings. It does not matter. She will, uh, she's such a tiny thing. She will jump in and out. Hey, quit hiding on me. She eats out of my hand. You want me to grab a snack? Yeah, let's do that. She got her name number two from the pecking order of the four hens. Uh, so I just named one, two, three, and four. And she was number two in the pecking order. The other three, they roosted in the trees and, you know, they were wild. And they, the other three just went to bed one night and I never saw them again. So I am not sure. Uh, predator probably. You just never know. But so she is the only one left here three and a half years later. And uh, what else do we know? It's not always noticeable on camera, but she has copper around her neck. And uh, yeah, it's really cool, especially in the sun. And right now I'm seeing a blue and a purple sheen off of her feathers as the afternoon sun hits her.
little single comb and boy her comb changes size you know when she molts and over the winter it almost disappears it's like she doesn't have a comb but then as spring comes along and she's starting to lay again that's another thing is uh, she laid four eggs before the uh, winter storm week that we had here and all that cold weather and then she stopped and then uh, then she laid three more eggs over the course of a week and then no more eggs for uh, two weeks and now I've gotten two eggs in the past uh, four days so she doesn't lay a whole lot she's an older hen and um, if she is you know game fowl or silky they're not known as everyday layers so there you go babe Something else I do often that most backyard chicken owners isn't uh, aren't going to have to deal with are leg bands. And as they get older, uh, you have to change them from the smaller size up to the larger size. If you put the larger size on them to begin with, those can fall off. And then, yeah, I've had that happen too many times. So, yeah, once they uh, grow out of them, you have to upgrade them to the larger size. And I do that, you know, that's not an everyday thing, but... I do need to do that at night and usually I've got a group that are all coming of age at the same time. So I just went through a period where over, uh, you know, three or four nights, three out of four nights that I went out and did four or five um, upgrades on the leg bands. And it's after dark so that's stuff I can't film. This might be a good challenge for me, uh, forcing myself to do videos every day again. I just, uh, yeah, some things get put on the wayside. I've not been skipping my naps for videos. <laughs> That's why I haven't been doing videos. I've been getting my naps in. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to try to do videos every day and get my naps in. And it helps that the days are getting longer. It's probably 7 o'clock. Most of the chickens have gone to bed. And so, yeah, it gives me a little bit more time to do videos. Um, and, uh, yeah, there are a couple of comments uh, on the la about my naps and laziness, and I deleted them. Don't go back and look. But here's the, here's the thing on the naps with me. Uh, some of you might not know, I do have Parkinson's disease. I uh, was diagnosed uh, at age 35, and I'm 50 now, and uh, I'm not going the conventional uh, 
treatment path with it, but uh, yeah, that's a whole long thing that I don't uh, particularly enjoy talking about or using as an excuse uh, very often. And yeah, but yeah, that's why I need naps. Is uh, is the Parkinson's? And it's uh, hi, what's a good an, an analogy would be a gas tank in a car. Uh, you know. Some people's gas tanks are bigger than others, and my gas tank is a, little, a lot smaller. You know, mine is uh, the the <laughs> the about the you know warning light is on on my gas tank pretty much every day when I wake up. I'm down to my last gallon, but um, my uh, brain does not produce uh, enough chemicals. The main one would be dopamine. And that's what uh, connects your brain with your muscles. So telling your hand to do this, that's, you know, yeah, so kind of all that stuff. And we produce those chemicals that communicate with our muscles uh, when we sleep. Um, so, you know, if I want to replenish my ability to use my muscles, I need sleep. And it's also, that's how our body tells ourselves, hey, you're tired, go to sleep. I'm sure a lot of you have experienced a very hard physical day and uh, at the end of the day you were just tired and your body was telling you, you know, it's an hour from bedtime, but man, I'm tired, I'm going to bed. And so uh, my, body, <laughs> my body tells me that all the time because I don't have enough of those, uh, those chemicals. Whereas, you know, when you put in a hard day as work, you empty your, your gas tank as it were and your body's saying, hey, uh, you need sleep so that we can refill your gas tank and uh, so yeah I wear myself out at noon and <laughs> my body's telling me dude you need some sleep to replenish the you know refill the the gas tank so that's why uh, a lot of naps are in my thing um, well and that's another thing it messes up my sleep schedule sometimes because if I just uh, do a ton of work in the morning or whatever it's bedtime, all right. Is somebody in the wrong clock? I think somebody's in the wrong clock. I gotta go take care of that. That's something else I probably have to do a lot more of than your typical backyard uh, chicken folks is catching escapees. Because, yeah, I don't want the wrong guys and girls uh, getting together. And it doesn't happen too much with the roosters. Usually it's right before dark because they're, yeah. All right, what was I talking about? Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, the Parkinson's means I have a smaller gas tank and sleep is what helps me refill my gas tank and so that's why naps are important to me. Yeah, I should have said that the first time, huh? All right, that's going to be it. I better stop talking so I've got stuff to talk about for the next uh, 30, 29 days. Happy April Fool's Day or whatever. And uh, I've got no jokes other than we'll see if I can make it every day in April. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. Take her easy, everybody. Did you follow me out here while I'm making a video? You like doing that. Yep. She she likes following me around. Oh, and my night's not done yet after the video. Yeah, I got to um, take these incubators inside. I have to take the eggs inside so that I can log them on my spreadsheet. And then I need to separate out the eggs for hatching and mark those. And also, uh, I have to go around all seven of my coops, and I'll do one last egg check. I will lock them in safely for the night, and then I will turn on all the fences. Uh, this fence is, that clip is uh, hot, so once I connect it to the fence, my fence is hot, so I gotta go do that. Looks like everybody's in. Usually, uh, I've got to chase a few stragglers, so oh, yeah, there's a straggler there. Go to bed, buddy. Go to bed.
dude, go to bed so I can close the door.